Buffalo Rangers. Video blog. Entry number one. The commuter. About six months ago, I decided to change out my mountain bike handlebars and switch them out for bullhorn handlebars and then wrap those handlebars live for the first time with no experience uh, for the beginning of this YouTube channel. Do I regret taking that path? Uh, we'll have to find out. But hopefully at the end of this video, you will be able to have a quicker path to being able to wrap your own bullhorn handlebars. A long, long time ago, in a neighborhood far, far away, and a man was sweating as he worked his way up the hill, drenching his acoustic transport bike, wondering why he was trying to commute to work on a bicycle when he could just drive his car. Then came the baby maker by Superhuman Bikes, an e-bike that rescued him, having to pedal like a normal human would to get to work. This e-bike was fantastic. First of all, you couldn't tell it was one. It did 20 miles an hour uphill, and it pretty much seemed to solve all his problems. He was commuting to work quite frequently. Unfortunately, the baby maker was not perfect. While it did make him seem superhuman, it was obvious that there were some problems. It was a mountain bike handlebar e-bike, so he could not get up the second floor and make it up to the staircase where he stored his bike. This was a problem. Also, its significant girth made entering doors a rather unpleasant situation, and it made it heavy, and it also rode a little funny. So, what does a man to do? Well, channel has an inner Ryan Holiday, and, uh, quote, it says, as Epictetus would say, do not discuss your philosophy, embody it. And so, I set out to replace these uh, mountain bike handlebars with something better bullhorn handlebars. Before I could begin that, though, unfortunately, I had a major medical situation. So, what, after I decided to do this, about a week or two later, I uh, found myself in the uh, ICU. That delayed things quite a bit. But once I got back on, I decided, hey, since I couldn't do anything, let me begin. Okay. To the prime bits, to wrapping the handlebars. All right, first thing you have to do is source your handlebars. Make sure you find the right gauge for your stem. That gauge number is written on your stem. You make sure that you find that number before you purchase your stem. If you don't get the right number, it won't fit. All right. Getting the handlebars off. Making sure you have the right set of tools. Unfortunately for me, while I did this, the first time around, I got all the tools I thought I needed. I did not make sure that I actually had the hand strength to actually do this. Uh, I was still injured and I was not able to turn uh, a wrench so some delays however when i finally did get going i did get everything off happily and then i realized i don't know how to take brakes off so that took a bit of learning to figure out what i needed to do and it turns out that i need to bend some metal after i bent that metal got the brakes off got the right set of tools to take the brakes off i was able to replace the bullhorn handlebar fantastic now what to do with brakes. I think that happened. Uh, I was able to locate them in a few different spots. First, I tried a traditional space that I had Googled. Now, this is a good looking space. It looks great on here. However, I know that I was gonna be riding aggressively and quickly. So I didn't want to have my brakes so uptight and real close. So I wanted to make sure that they were where I was going to be riding and anticipating. And so far that's worked out. I've gotta be honest. That has been the right decision for me. I like where they are, but in order to have them sit there, they're gonna need their own padding. Otherwise, I was gonna be sitting on a bolt. That wasn't gonna work out. Um, uh, you can also get the other brake types where they are at the, the top of the bullhorn. I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna mess with messing with a new kind of brake system. That just didn't seem like something that was going to suit what I wanna do at the time. So I didn't go with that. I, uh, I went out with a, a slightly different, different way. Last thing is that the, right, the tip that you need to know for which way to wrap your, your, uh, your handlebars is whichever way you're going to be pushing on the handlebars when you're riding, you need to go the opposite. So when you're riding your bike, you're going to be pushing 
over those handlebars. When you're holding onto them, you're gonna be holding over the handlebars. So therefore you want to wrap over, coming back over on top of those handlebars in order to get handlebars uh, taping that's gonna stay secure, even like the ones that I have that don't have any adhesive on them. These are just freestanding. They've held up just fine. Tape the bottom tape uh, and the end cap at the top. Go ahead and just wrap them there. When you're wrapping them, you wanna make sure you give it the spacing of about half of that next tape, so that way it's an overlap of about a half, uh, so that way it sticks together and you'll have enough tape to reach the end. Uh, the tape uh, manufacturers have these things pretty well figured out. You can always trim the very end top before you, you cap it in. So keep that in mind. It's to wrap and don't go over tight, you know, and you can feel when you're really stretching it. So if you're finding yourself struggling, you're doing too tight, just a nice firm wrap all the way around and make sure that at the very end, you go ahead and tuck those tips in and tap them in. Now, I didn't quite do that the right time the first time, so I had to go back, trim them, and get them in later when I was stronger. That's it. Now, let's go to the regrets. Do I regret doing this on film and having all of you guys see it? Uh, the only regret is that it took me so long. But so, so far, it's on the non-regret side of things. Um, do I feel like maybe I should have gotten some more comfortable uh, tires? I don't know. We'll see. Anyway. Also, the bike looks good. Uh, people stop me. Um, I am kind of an ambassador for e-biking now because people are surprised that my bike is an e-bike. It's a bit of a sleeper. Um, it's very simple. Um, no one gets mad at me when I'm riding it. I'm like getting the, hey, you e-biker kind of, you know, thing. So. That's been kind of a unique situation. And uh, the um, interesting part is I've become more of an advocate and more interested in road safety and how we engage with um, uh, private citizens, how we engage with governmental organization and non-governmental organizations to, to really get out the information and keep us all safe out in the road. And uh, thank you to the people that have been I really appreciate the work that's been done. Next thing I want to be able to do is add a bit of more customization to the bike, which is make it more road worthy. So if anyone out there would like to leave a comment below to let me know um, what kind of tires are going to be the, the best kind uh, for a commuter. I live in an area that's going to be getting some rain. It's going to be getting a little bit of snow. It typically doesn't stay long, but I want to be able to still continue to commute with that. Um, I'm wondering if I need to get some mud guards, but that's kind of where I'm at. Um, I just want to make this bicycle more and more roadworthy. If you like this video, go ahead and watch this one here about uh, my e-pump and uh, let me know what kind of video I should make next.